All right, gonna do a video refuting the Catholic false doctrine of infant baptism and showing how it's built on eisegesis of scripture. Now, what is eisegesis, you might say? Well, eisegesis is when you enforce, you basically read your own theology into the text instead of letting the scriptures explain themselves. That's what eisegesis is. And with the Roman Catholic false doctrine of infant baptism, how they do it with eisegesis is they will take the verses that mention entire households being baptized and they uh, insert infants into the verse and say, see, there must have been infants that are baptized as well, even though it appears nowhere in the text. So let's go over these verses they like using and show how these verses actually prove the opposite. They actually refute infant baptism because in each one of them, they believed first. Okay, First of all, they use Lydia and her household being baptized, but they ignore the fact that nothing about infants was mentioned in this passage. What's overlooked, again, is that when her household was baptized, they had the gospel preached to them first. They believed, and then the household was baptized. Acts chapter 16, verse 14 to 15. And a certain woman woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thatria, I hope I'm saying that right, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought uh, she besought us, saying, If ye have indeed judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Okay, but notice verse 14. Uh the things that were spoken by Paul. She attended to the things that were spoken by Paul. What, what is that? They're, they're basically preaching the gospel and she believed and then her household was baptized. They overlooked that passage right there. The same is the case with the household of the Philippian jailer when, when they were baptized. Paul spoke the word of the Lord to the entire household and then the entire household believes and then they're baptized. But infants are not capable of believing and thus were not baptized. If there were infants in the house, they were not baptized. Okay, Acts chapter 16, verse 30 to 34. It's another verse they like using. But again, it proves the opposite. Acts chapter 16, verse 30 to 34. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he sat meat before them and rejoiced, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. They believed. Okay, but notice how before they were spoken the word of the, they had the word of the Lord spoken to them. I'll put it that way. Again, they were they were believing. They were not. There was no infants being baptized. There's nowhere in the text is that mentioned. Another example they like using is the household of Crispus. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, Crispus. Uh, I think, I, again, I'm not good at pronouncing some of these names. They try to use the example of his household being baptized as again the somehow proof that infants are baptized, even though again there's nowhere our infants nowhere our infants mentioned anywhere in the verse. Uh, they were again believers when they were baptized. Acts chapter 18, verse number eight. See, again, this is how eisegesis works. They will, infor they will force their own doctrine into the text. Acts chapter 18, verse 8. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Okay, notice that. They believed and were baptized. There is no infants mentioned. Uh, in the case of the household of Stephanaeus, I think I said it, Stephanus, however you say it, being baptized, once again, nowhere does the text mention infants being baptized. When it says his household was baptized, First Corinthians chapter one, verse sixteen, and I and I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Again, where is infants mentioned? Uh, and also, the proof that they were believing before they were baptized is Paul mentioned that the household of Stephanus was addicted to the ministry. This can't be said of infants. First Corinthians chapter sixteen, verse fifteen. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia. I think as I say it. Uh, and that they were, uh, and, sorry, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They were addicted to the ministry of the saints. How are, how is that true of infants? It's not. We see that in each case of households being baptized, we also read about the word of the Lord being preached to the household and the household believing and them being baptized. This also lines up perfectly with Acts chapter eight, verses thirty-five and thirty-nine, which shows that faith in Christ precedes baptism. The uh, eunuch was not able to get baptized before he believed in Christ. You know what doth hinder me to be baptized? If thou believest with, with all thine heart, talked about that in that passage. Okay. Uh, infants are not capable of believing. Thus, any baptism of infants is invalid. And not to mention the fact that Roman Catholic baptism is not even biblical baptism. It's just sprinkling water. Not, it's not like immersion in water like we see in scripture. Uh, so even, even if infant baptism was in scripture, the Roman Catholic baptism is still invalid because it's not scriptural forms of baptism. 
It's that simple. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism and don't be deceived by their eisegesis of God's word. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.